Then on 14-22, Popo Toys, Jim Marito, 186 West Main Street, takes permission to open a restaurant bar, requiring a 435-31A11. Okay, and the 39 parking spaces required, zero provided, subject to the deep deep business zone. So, gentlemen, just before you go, I think I can hear this application. I think we're outside the 200 on this one.
a religious establishment, i.e. a church. Mm -hmm. uh, this boy remembers granting a church, not, not even, I think it's within 50 feet or something, I mean, the, the rock church. Is, is that, does that present a, a difficulty in the state of the Um I have the uh, work life license approval, um, and the, um, the New York State work license approved it, meaning that that, <coughs> that that is not considered a church. A church <coughs> excuse me, is more of a freestanding structure, according to the liquor authority. And it's got to have, um, it's got to meet the requirements with the state liquor authority to be considered a church. Having a storefront, um, call it gospel or whatever, or whatever does it classify in the state uh, with the authority to be a church? Thank you for wow. educating the board because I wasn't, I wasn't I aware of that. At four I years, right, four the end of the meeting, I will give you the, um, the letter from the state liquor authority okay. um, giving us an approval, conditional approval. Um, the only thing that is pending is that um, the renovation has to be complete and pictures need to be submitted along with work as comp and um, disability before they'll issue the license, which is typical for any business. You're going to have an under the license to be sits drinking. And That's not the name. It's obviously the corporation name. Obviously, the corporation. Yeah, no, no, no. The liquor license will be under what name? That corporation. That, that, yeah, yeah. So, my name. So personal, but that corporation. Right. <clears throat> now you're seeking relief for parking. Thirty-nine required. Yes, sir. Zero provided. Where are you going to park the cars? Um, I think. Uh, well, I will state that I'm not opening until 5 o'clock. Yeah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm seeking an occupancy under 100 people. Um, I feel that there's enough municipal lots with the court building and what the, that I would be considered um, a lot of my customers would be walking. I don't think I'm, I'm far off of the main street on the beaten path. Um, there are spots along. Um, along the road there, um, in front of the college, that I, I noticed that a lot of the um, delis and day business use, so that there's a lot more spaces that, than I realized at first around that whole bend, going up to, I believe, River Avenue, that will free up, because I'm not open during the day. Um, and a lot of those businesses from River to where I'm located are not open after 5, 6 o'clock. I will say, as a, a, somebody who has lived in Patchogue, that I do remember when that was open as a bar. That was Tippins, was that Tippins? Tippins, it was the Blue Ice. I don't know. We, we can go on and on with that. But it, it seems that that was the case, that the, the, the road itself was the parking spaces for that establishment. And I'm talking about usually at 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So I, I will concur with, with, with what you are saying. You were what? Was it Hammond Street in the back? Hammond Street is in the back. <coughs> Does yeah. the property go through Evans? Yeah. yeah. So, so you're not expanding the footprint of the building. No, the footprint of the building. You're not adding any, anything to the building. It's an internal renovation. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, the footprint of the building essentially is a, almost in the entire lot. There's an existing alleyway uh, to the west of the, of the building um, that's 8, 10 feet. Uh, that goes to the back uh, to, a, to an egress door in the back of the building. Um, other than that, like I said, the, the building pretty much takes up the entire lot. Do you have a survey? Uh, I have a site plan uh, to be submitted with the uh, application. Oh, there is a survey. So, it's all the other I, I believe it's what we would plan for is a, uh, is a back um, location in the rear of the building that um, right now has a, a concrete, I, I believe, footprint that I'll be, try, I'll be um, applying to use as a smoking section so I don't have people on Main Street, outside Main Street doing that, so I push them into the rear of the building. Yeah, right now there's uh, an existing, for lack of a better term, uh, bar. Um, outside of that rear egress, that's not going to be part of our application. There's going to be no outside drinking or anything. I also know, I noticed on the uh, survey and also your elevation, uh, part of the building has a second floor. Are you going to also be occupying that 
second floor? Um, that? I believe there's four apartments. Uh, we took two for offices, and the other two um, is actually one of um, the your bar business is going to be on the ground floor. I know, sorry. All, you, all your business is going to be on the ground floor. Correct. And out back is just going to be a smoking section. No food, no drinks. Yeah, that was my proposal. Correct. So this comprises the, the entire first floor? Yes. This is Jerry. Yes.
I mean, there's also going to be a concern with parking in terms of like there's a lot of residences around there. So a concern when I saw that, I was like, oh, is there going to be loud live music? But if the intent is to just have one guy playing a guitar, that's a huge difference from what. And also, what I was going to say is, you've got all the tables seating for 50 people in a dining room. I don't know, was there dining seating in the historic use of this, or is this new seating? That, and, and what I was going to just say is, if you're not using this dance floor for anything, why not just space the tables out on the, the site plan? It would seem to me to be a more accurate presentation of how you're really trying to use the space. You're not trying to have a lot of people standing room. You're just trying to have yeah. a neighborhood craft beer bar is more the plan doesn't really reflect that. Mm -hmm. Well, that just uh, just to be clear, that one, that five-inch riser up to what is now labeled dance floor, and the six-inch oh, riser up to the stage, um, those are existing right now. That this is, is existing. That is the existing yeah. layout as it is right now. And even with those columns smack in the middle of them? Yes. There's even a, um, I don't even know if it's operational fireplace um, on the top of the area where the stage starts that it's going to be getting removed. Um, so this is existing. So there was mm -hmm. music. Carol, is there a way we have any sort of record with a fire marshal permit? I know. Uh, I can tell well, you. Well, was this ever legally used as a bar? No. Uh, I can that. tell you. It was the state the state was it, But did it have a fire marshal permit? Did that have a CL? I, I said can tell you that when I was I had a CL. I had the CL. You do? I have the old liquor application. So you have a previous CO. And I had a liquor license for 22 years, according to the state. If we could get a copy of that CO so we could see what the occupancy yeah, the occupancy, the was, occupancy was, was around before. 90, I want to say 97 people. And I'm seeking the same. I can tell you that when I was a boy, this was a bakery. Oh, yeah. 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 When he said there's a fireplace in the back, there. I remember that that was the bakery. Because um, where they bread. It's, where, it's where they bake the bread. <laughs> and it was, it was 28 cents for that bread. It was, I was, Probably eight and ten years old when I went back there to fix the rail burner with my boss. So, yeah, that this is definitely the same. When I saw that Sam and ABC go home, then and, and I know that they had the bakery in there. So, then Mr. McCullough was the one who changed it into a bar in '71. You used to get a story to tell So this was a bakery. <laughs> this was a bakery. That, when he said there was a fireplace in the back. The village needs a bakery. Yeah, right. It'd be nice if they put it back there, right? But, uh, it's definitely like a bar. It's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bar. Like I said, it was called the Blue Ice. I do remember when it was the Blue Ice. It didn't have the greatest, well, we won't go into that. And then, <laughs> uh, and then Tippins. But it, it certainly was, uh, it does have a pedigree that I will tell you is, is, a, is a bar. And I do remember the cars up and down that road. We do have a very unique situation here, I will say this on the record. Um, it is a D2 use there. No matter what we put there, it's going to have some kind of parking variance because there's just nothing, there's just not that space there. Everybody needs the, the road. Now, can we make an argument that we can put a less intensive use there? I think that could be a valid argument. But it's already been operating as a bar, or has a pedigree of operating as a bar. So it's something that, that passed away on the on, on decision. Uh, in any event, if you'll excuse me, any member of the public who would like to speak for or against this application, sir, you would like to? Sure. Yes. If you would come up, gentlemen, and give me a little show.
So um, right now, it's low intensity, and there's not a problem. Um, we have a church that only opens on Sundays, so that's, that's not a problem, because the other businesses are closed. And then we have an attorney upstairs that, you know, it, you know, they don't really, they see maybe one or two patients at uh, customs at a time. So I think a bar would, would cause a major problem with parking because, it, you know, a lot of these people are going to end up parking in the spaces that I created for the pharmacy and the doctor. And these uh, patients, they can't walk far. They need to be close. Is your operation open, sir, after 5 o'clock? Yes. It's, uh, yes. The pharmacy's open until 8, and the doctor's open until 5 or 6 o'clock. So I know that um, in Halloween, it's just, just this past Halloween, they had an affair there, like in this proposed bar. They had a party there. And there was uh, the whole parking lot, the, bar, the 17 spaces were all taken up. And the people were going in and out to the back, climbing over a fence that there was a fence there. So they were going through that alley, you know, over the fence, and walking through the alley and going through that, and doing the, 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 the affair there. So I, mean, I can see that, you know, happening in the future, where, you know, of course, it's a lot of congestion that they would jeopardize the business that would establish with the, the pharmacy and the doctor and the lawyers and so forth. And it would, it would hurt those businesses because these people won't be able to find parking at some point. So uh, I think we've seriously got to consider the parking situation. I know that, you know, you've got to have something in there, but, you know, uh, 50, people eating, they, they're going to park their car and they're going to be there for two hours. It's not the same like going to a pharmacy, they go five minutes in and out. So, you know, you've got 50 or so people inside the bar, that's maybe uh, 20 cars or so, and they're going to be sitting there for a while. And so I think it's going to cause a lot of uh, congestion and stuff to bring it back. I don't think it's like business for that strip. Thank you, Mr. Diaz. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Mr. Bojack. John Bojack, a nice Um, I just want to ask a threshold question. Was there supposed to be a notice of this, uh, for, uh, this hearing posted in front of the bar? The yes. Public? There should be. I think there is, isn't there? I thought, when I wrote by it, I don't know. Is it in the window? We posted it the day I picked it up several weeks ago from the pallets. In the window. It was in the window. I have a picture of it with the yeah. timestamp on it. Well, it's interesting. I have a picture of today, and I don't see it in any of the windows. Is it in the one to the, maybe to the east? I don't know. To the, to well, the left are, John says he didn't see it in any of the windows. These are on Main Street windows. There's another window. It's all on I, I went by it today, and I thought I saw it. There are two, there are two notices here. There's a permit from the village for work inside the building, and the other notice is for the alcohol, it's for the um, liquor authority. Okay, yeah. maybe that's what I saw. Right. 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 So I, I did not see the okay. typical sign that uh, applicant posts sure. for the notice. Sure he's supposed to. All right, well, let me check that. We will ask them. Okay. On the retort. That was my first question. Okay, thank you. Um, and it will actually relate to my, my whole point about this later on. I just want to ask another question, too, from uh, the attorney for the board. Uh, I see that the zoning, the Court of Appeals recently passed a new ruling about parking rules. Does that apply in this case? I'm not that, I'm not that. Uh, see, the problem is when you have existing buildings, uh, and uh, you, really, you really can't force somebody tear down the building to make it conform. And I know there have been court decisions to that effect. So, uh, you know, yeah. new construction is certainly something different. But that's why we were asking, have you gone beyond the existing footprint? Have you gone up, you know? Right. Um, the, the implications of this use for parking in the area is something that we we have to consider, and what this okay. other gentleman brought up is certainly merits 
consideration. You know? Right, right. You know, I, I'm never against these proposals. The village yeah. is expanding, and then, and I know. as the owner has indicated, uh, and in fact, when I hear about the Emporium, same story. Um, we're just moving in this direction. I know. So, yeah. And now we're going to move to another part of the village, and with that will come changes. But I happen to go to the laundromat. <laughs> so I'm somewhat familiar with this location. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yes, the bodega is going to be affected because they don't close at 5 o'clock. Uh, the laundromat is going to be affected because they don't close at 5 o'clock, too. And these are businesses, they're small, you know, they're thriving businesses, and they are going to be impacted. You can't make believe here that they're not going to be, because they are going to be impacted. Uh, is there enough parking on River Avenue? Probably yes, after 8 or 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, well, there are parking spaces there, and, they, and that, that's true. They're, you can probably meet his 39 spots that he needs. Um, I had thought about asking him to make a lease deal for the Hammond Street parking lot, because it is back there. But I, I see now that that's actually in use. And the only other space I saw around there is the mail fabrication plant. It does have a parking lot. It's a raw one, but there is one there too. You might consider speaking to the owner for that use. John, I will also say, and I'm going to even go on the record and say, I do remember when the other bars operated, the old lace mill was still up. Huh. And that lot, that dirt lot of the old lace mill, was it was a spot where the people would park and walk across the street. Okay. So so now the, that we don't really have that luxury right now at Briarcliff yeah. because if the school's in session in the evening, that lot that's a full lot. Right, but you know people park but that's gonna be Briarcliff's problem. Just like just the yes. the owners the owner came up before me. Yeah. He's gonna have to face the issue that other owners have also faced. They've had to make arrangements to protect their property, so to speak and block off illegal parking. That's, that's going to be a burden placed on you. Um, but I, I'm just saying, I'm not against this proposal, but I, I think you sense what I'm saying. That there's some practical common sense issues that, about that it. That Mr. Diaz brought up, right. and that you just brought up now, that there are neighboring businesses there. Right, there are. And that, you know, the laundromat is a single, single woman who operates it. Right. Her business is going to be Impact. There's no doubt about it. And the bodega may survive, but there's going to be parking pressures right in front of it for the hours that it's open, congruent to the bar. It's as simple as that. So it's something to be considered. All right, so here's my last, my last pitch. Since I had appeared at the, since I took, uh, was at the other uh, hearing about the same one about the Emporium, I'm going to echo what Mr. Vasquez asked this board to consider with respect to this. To ask this owner to be responsible. Uh, Follow all the rules. If it's a change of use, to let the board know if that's the case. Because with the other application, I'm talking about the Emporium, there was a pattern there of things not being done. And this is the same owner. So maybe he has incorporated the message from that last meeting, but if he has it, maybe he needs to be reminded once again. Because this could come up again. We could have a, a vision of this bar change just like the other vision has changed. And no one would know about it, and, and permits could even expire. <laughs> so that's my last, Mr. Mr. Vasquez asked for, I asked for as well as the owner, be responsive. That's as simple as that. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Vasquez. Anyone else would like to speak for again? Gentlemen, if you could come back up, please. Gentlemen, you heard the comments from the public, if you would kindly respond to those. At least help us out with the lot in the back that this gentleman cleared is for his 17 spots for the tenant. Okay. You had some kind of an affair there that seemed to be using it. How are we going forward? How are we going to address this? I'm sorry. Um, did, I, I, I know he said he had cleared a lot. He cleared a lot. For 17 right, spots. For his tenants. Right. And, and he's all of a saying that it's been in use from this, part, this place? Are you, Just, you had an affair or something the other night. The place was open. No, I, I haven't. You haven't even opened yet. May no, I haven't been, I haven't been May I speak about that? I know about that affair. Oh, you do that? I do, right. Excuse me, we'll, we'll, we'll get that, we're going to put up right this way. Right. Because I, I uh, spoke to the laundromat owner who told me about this event. There is an illegal tiki bar, as you mentioned before. A tenant's been operating the bar at the back of this property for some time. 
he held a Halloween event and it was exactly as the landlord suggested, it was out of control. But is it this gentleman? But it wasn't this gentleman. It was not this gentleman. It's not the applicant. No. It's not the applicant. They were using his police property. Thank you. They were using his property. Oh, yes. There's an illegal applicant of Mara Pacho. That's what they're telling us. Oh, yes. We flushed that out. Okay, I can understand the confusion. I wasn't even you guys. Uh, be that as it may, how would you address the neighborhood then? Um, I need to, first of all, I have to be a little bit more familiar with that, uh, his parking lot. I, okay. This is the first time. You can't I, picture it. Or I can't picture it. Um, uh, for me to come up here and just uh, shoot off an idea, I, I, I would have to just do a little more due diligence and see exactly where what he's talking about. Fair enough. Um, I, I was completely unaware of those parking spots. Okay. Um, didn't know they even existed. So I would, to me, I would go over there um, and, and take a look at that. And as far as the uh, sign, um, the sign was posted the day I met Carol, and I have a picture of it in the window. It's currently still in the window. It is, huh? Yeah, if it's, yeah it's to the left of the door. Okay. In a double bedded uh, window, and it's on this picture right now. Um, as I said, I drive by fast, so I, yeah. I don't know who's the, the other signs that you have in there, so I, there's actually, um, you can just have two storefronts, and the stairs uh, actually split the space yeah, and go right up in the center. So you have the door for 186 would be on the east side, uh, west side, excuse me. Uh, the door for 184 would be the stairs going up, and then 182 would be on the east side of the building. But the doors are already very close together. There's windows on both sides. He probably put it on the one to the east. Um, but, you know, I know it's there. I'm, I drove by and saw it myself. Um, as far as the parking lot in the rear, if it's the one that I'm thinking of, the um, the way the elevation is on there, uh, in the back of the building where the lot line is, there's a retaining concrete retaining wall that's I think probably three to four feet tall, uh, and then there's a uh, steel pipe guardrail above that. Um, certainly, someone could you know sneak through the guardrail. It's not. Um, you know, I, would, I wouldn't call it a uh, uh, fence, but it's there. Um, and if, you know, the worry is that people are going to park there and then come through the back, um, you know, fencing that off or, or putting up some kind of barrier to prevent that would certainly be, you know, within reason of what we would be willing to do. It's a yeah. yeah. I mean, just like, off the top of my head, I would, I would incur the cost for signs that says parking for the pharmacy. I thought, I believe, did you say the laundry mat or no? Pharmacy, well, the pharmacy of Mr. Diaz is, uh, Mr. Bojack talked about another neighbor who is the, uh, the one just concerned with the 17 spots. Well, that's, yeah, that's the pharmacy. And just the pharmacy? The doctor. The, the doctor, the pharmacy. Lawyer. Church. We know that is the, the Aviano corner it used to be a, Okay, uh, so I would list the place. four places yeah. on the yeah. signs before they pull in. I would propose those signs. Um, and I would just definitely notify my staff not to, uh, okay. to use that. All right. So you would... Try to be a good neighbor if this board was to grant this. I have no problem giving him my phone number or anybody, you know, including public safety and, uh, and finding. Maybe basis. if you can meet with him or about his hours, I don't think they're going to. Oh, very good. Would you ask that, Mr. Hunter, please? Yes. Can we just, for the record, clarify the proposed hours of operation? Because it seems to me like you're going to be opening later and you're really not going to. On my state liquor authority application, we were planning on opening 5 p.m. daily. 5 p.m. Um, okay. And it, and it goes to what after that? Whatever the state allows. I see. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Are you going to open earlier on Sundays, especially in the fall? Um, that's, a, I, that's a question I don't know. I don't know if we're, I don't even know if we're still on TV. Too. So that's a question I would need to answer later as far as you would, I would, Assume that you're asking about football. See, I, I, I wouldn't know that. Sometimes these places, um, we have a place in Astoria that has no TVs. It's like a cocktail driven place. Um, and I, I don't know the layout or the design, um, what my partner's doing there exactly. For us to pull to say, I'm going to have TV. If you were to, that's part of the, what the public and Mr. Bojack had just said. It's a, it's a, a, a Different use inside your building. Yeah, I think the. You'd have, um, you know, you have to let us know. I think going. with um, if we do open on Sunday for football and he's cons uh, he's concerned about the parking, I think the the spots are containable. That I could I have somebody on our staff police that 
if I have to have him stand out there um, until the, the culture is realized that he can't walk there, um, I will work with him on that. Okay. There has to be some way to work out some lots somewhere. And your, your client, Hal, just gets used to, hey, that's where I walk. Yeah, I'm, I think on that side of the main street, there's, believe it or not, in my personal opinion, there's a lot more parking spots, whether they're allowed for our, our, our venue or not, but I think people have a better chance of finding parking with the Briarcliff College area and the, the, old, the, the fitness. Not that I'm planning on using those parts, but I think people just find parking in that area a lot more freely than somebody on the east side of the street. If that if that rear lot that's elevated is is barricaded or blocked off from you know people being able to see through there, it's not really a convenient place to park for someone coming to this establishment. You have to walk all the way around. You'd be going all the way around the entire corner. You'd be much better served parking across the street at the college, which is a empty foot wall. Um, and works with them as far as policing that situation and not having like. Um, Access debris in their parking lot, and trying to come up with a plan on ma maintaining that um, that parking lot. Gotcha. Mr. Chair. Yes. A follow up to that. That's been the, yeah. there might be a question all times since this application is, and I, you know, I go to flows there and I used to yeah. go to that gym there. So I think at night a lot of time there is a lot of access capacity in that lot, and is there a possibility of you mm -hmm. entering into a formal arrangement, even for the good team? We're, Stalls we're, 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 we're uh, in a formal arrangement, I'm, I'm not too sure about, but the biggest complaint of the uh, the owner and tenants in that is that when Live After Five and other main huge events that you have on Main Street, it's not um, being properly maintained. And with that being said, I think the mayor has, um, has, a, has done a pretty good job with getting the one or two gentlemen that clean Main Street at night kind of want to push them over there too and maintain those lots, um, especially on Sunday and Monday. The worst thing for the village, I think, as a whole would be for that parking lot to be jeopardized in a way that if you're showing up at school on Monday and you have debris in the parking lot and six packs and stuff from all the businesses in Main Street, that's just going to become a very big problem. So that's something that I've um, had discussions with, with the mayor, and this is backdating, um, I'd say about eight months ago to a year, about making sure we have someone maintaining our parking lot. Um, and I believe Brian Egan have, has um, made sure that uh, that and the court building is being cleaned on a, on a, on a basis. But I, I, I would take more of a um, uh, stronger approach being down across the street. So it, what I feel as a business owner, I would, I'll be pointed at first that it would be my customers. So our plans internally is to send out um, the staff, like a bar back, and make sure he walks around and picks up any type of debris in that parking lot. So it's a very um, focal point of what we're doing. And me being a, a business owner of all the businesses in, on Main Street, I think it's important that um, Main Street doesn't lose their rights to having that, par that parking, whether it's an event that I'm doing or an event the village is doing, that parking lot is being used. Um, on a, on a monthly or quarterly basis, so as far as my I'm concerned. Very good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, just yeah. one other thing I just want to state for the record, that Suffolk, that's a Suffolk County Court building. It is not a village municipal parking. Correct. Well, I don't believe it's enforced very much. It, it is, there is no official municipal parking back there, so I don't think for the purposes of our application we would consider that as being I'm not. I'm not asking that either. Yeah. I know, but you mentioned it earlier, mm -hmm. and now you just brought it up again. So it's just something we have to keep in mind that it's not like it's a village parking lot. No, I agree. Any other questions from members of the board? Any other member of the public like to speak for or against? Gentlemen, do you have anything else to add? I'm just just for the record. I'm going to drop off a certificate of occupancy from 1973. Um, showing it can be converted to a lounge and the uh, alteration is being um, approved. And I'm also dropping off a certificate, excuse me, a certificate of zoning compliance dated 1998, uh, Blue Ice Enterprise um, for the uh, for the permit. So I'll, I'll be dropping those those off to um, and along with the um, 
in your own state um, with the license approval. Um, You're going to make some corrections on the uh, site plan or what? Yes, plan? yes, I have notes for um, run the second floor floor plan, uh, amend the wording of the dance floor and stage areas, and uh, the copies of the seals, liquor licenses. I say just a minute. Can I take a motion? I'll take a motion on this application. Make a motion. We close this application for the decision calendar pending the documents that the gentleman is going to be dropping. Mr. Hall, I'll make a motion to uh, close the application uh, pending uh, the documents that we dropped off. Second the box. Mr. Shabbat, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No, so carried. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yeah. thank you. Hello. Uh, we'll also provide a uh, picture of the. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. And then, uh, Tom. Uh, I'll take a motion on recess, please. I'm going to put the motion back on. Thank you. Thank you. Take a motion on recess. Motion. Mr. Seller made a motion to be on recess. A recess. Uh, uh, recess. Yeah. And a second to buy. Mr. Spider, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.